morning to our St. Andrews friends. We're the Rashfords. We want to wish everyone good health as we continue to battle against COVID-19. And although we're still missing the fun things that we usually do, such as seeing family and friends, school and sports, we also know that we're starting to see light at the end of the tunnel. We want to recognize and be thankful, of course, for all the blessings of the first responders that are working in the health field, supplying us food, transportation, and so many other essentials. Today, as we gather our hearts with yours, we invite you now to join with us and light a candle safely in your home, almost like any other Sunday at church, to remind us that no matter what is happening in our lives and in our world, no matter how far apart we might feel, Jesus is with us always by his spirit drawing us close together in the light of his uniting love. Happy Sunday and stay safe, everyone. Good day. Welcome to worship at St. Andrew's United Church, Hamilton. This service is for Sunday, May the 17th. I'm Ken McDonald. Uh, Cindy Jurga, our music director, will be uh, organizing the music for this service. Uh, you'll hear from Lori White later. And also we thank the Rashford family for lighting the Christ candle this morning. There is a story about a sheep rancher in the mountains of Idaho. They were very isolated in their hut, managing the sheep, and this particular shepherd played the violin. It was very significant and important for him to be able to do that. As time went on, and especially in that climate, the violin went badly out of tune. He didn't have the gift of perfect pitch, so wondered how he would be able to tune the violin decided to send a letter to a radio station that he listened to. He asked that at a particular time, on a particular date, that they would strike the note for him. Well, the letter arrived, and they did that. They struck the note at that particular minute that had been instructed. And the shepherd was able to tune the violin because of that note that was struck. Worship is a bit like that. It's a time when we come together to listen to the voices of God, to be able to get some messages from the Creator, that will help us to organize our lives in days ahead. May this worship be a time in which you are able to listen to that key note that is really important for order ordering your days ahead. May God bless you. And I turn it over to Lori.
Well, hi, everybody. It's great to see the pictures again. I really enjoyed going around and taking pictures of St. Andrew's friends this week. And also, thanks for the great pictures that were sent in. Uh, just as a, a, it's so great to see each other and to hear what we're doing and to know that we're all still there and uh, helps us stay strong. Now, I don't know about you, but I have been watching a lot of nature programs on TV during all of this. And I've been learning things that I did not know I wanted to learn. This week, I learned about how lobsters grow. Didn't give it much thought before this, quite honestly. All I knew about lobsters was that they're delicious and they live in the ocean. You know, back in uh, when we lived in, in New Brunswick uh, on Greg's uh, settlement charge years ago, it was a really big treat to go down to the village of Alma, New Brunswick, and go down to the, to the dock, to the wharf, and get a freshly caught freshly steamed lobster or two and then we would take them back to Fundy Park for a picnic and they were good. I knew that a one pound lobster is good. I know that a one and a half pound lobster is even better but I never gave it a lot of thought about how they got from one pound to one and a half to two pounds like just didn't. This is what I have learned. A lobster is a soft mushy animal that lives inside a rigid shell. The soft, mushy part of the animal grows, but the shell doesn't grow. So the lobster has a pretty big problem. Apparently, he grows and he gets more and more cramped and more and more uncomfortable. And then when he can't take it anymore, he goes down underneath a big pile of rocks, you know, for protection. And he goes down under these rocks and he pulls in all of his soft, mushy parts, like even his eyes and his claws, he pulls them in and he wiggles and wiggles and wiggles his way out of the old shell and then just gets rid of it, just casts it off. And underneath, voila, he's got a brand new roomier shell that he can grow into. And apparently he goes through this process many, many times in the course of his lifetime, a lot when he's little and growing rapidly. And then when he's older, he sheds his shell about every year. So it's a lot of times. And I'm not sure how they know this, but they say it is a very uncomfortable, very difficult experience. Well, I guess occasionally they even lose a claw in the midst of this, uh, you know, pulling in and shedding their shell. So it's not easy, but they do it a lot. And if you want to watch, there's a video clip on the CBC website uh, from the Bonnie Bay Marine Resource Center, which is attached to uh, Memorial University in Newfoundland. And they have their Larry the Lobster. And they have a video clip of Larry in his tank shedding his shell. So you can watch it happen, which is quite amazing. Now, this whole thing resonated with me and the experience that we're in right now. The idea of, you know, being under a pile of rocks, taking shelter, being cramped and uncomfortable, mm, kind of felt familiar. We will get through it. We know we will. But will we have grown when we get through it, like the lobster? Will this uncomfortable experience that we're going through give us like a new start in life, a new bigger perspective, a new bigger, larger outlook, a new expanded framework, vision? Will there be something we're growing into as we come out the other side of this? Well, I don't know. I hope so. But I do know this. God did not cause this pandemic. God does not ever cause pain and suffering. God goes through it with us. God goes into whatever we're going through. God is in this crampedness with us. And God will be in the emerging beyond it. Whatever transformation, growth that may bring us, both personally and as a community. I hope and pray that we'll have the courage to, you know, shed our, our past and leave it behind. Again, like the lobster. This week, you might want to check out a video clip by Rabbi Abraham Tversky. He tells the parable of the lobster. It's pretty good. And also, you might want to look at Isaiah 43, verse 18, that says, God makes all things new. And I think maybe even us. So, just remember, 
If Larry the Lobster can do it, so can you. Stay strong, everyone. Bye-bye. Good morning, everybody. I hope everyone is staying well where we can't be together. I've been thinking a lot lately about the ordinary little insignificant things we used to do. Things we used to take for granted. And now that we can't do them, well, they're the things we miss most of all. Like hanging out with people we know. To be totally honest, there were Sundays when I just didn't really feel like going to church. I mean, we all feel that way sometimes, right? But after this, I will so appreciate doing ordinary everyday stuff. Like school and church and walking my dog and being with my friends. I hope we will all have a new appreciation for our daily routines. I hope we will all have a new appreciation for each other and the ordinary little things of life. But, until we can be together again, we can pray together from our homes and pretend we're in church like any other Sunday. So please, join with me in prayer. This is a repeat after me prayer. Dear God, keep us strong and brave. Remind us how much we need each other. Help us appreciate each other. And be understanding with each other. Help us find ways to care for one another. In whatever ways we can. Remind us that you are with us. Each and every day. No matter what. We pray in Jesus' way. Amen. Today's Bible reading is from Psalm 150, verses 1 through 6. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his temple. Praise his strength in heaven. Praise him for the mighty things he has done. Praise his supreme greatness. Praise him with trumpets. Praise him with harps and lyres. Praise him with drums and dancing. Praise him with harps and flutes. Praise him with cymbals. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise the Lord, all living creatures. Praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. Much of the science world is based on wave theory. A wave transfers energy through matter or space. The wave is a vibration around a fixed field. There are two types of waves, well, that I know of, mechanical and electromagnetic. Quantum mechanics explains how every particle can also be described as a wave. Electromagnetic waves travel through the universe, creating and changing. Waves are the basis upon which we make and hear sounds, see objects, experience electric power, radio, TV, and even the computer by which you see this service. They are how everything is held together. We've been hearing lately about how significant tidal waves and the waves of the ocean work around the world. They are in a particular rhythm that repeats. The rhythm of waves connects us to each other and to God. I was once in a drumming workshop. We developed very rudimentary rhythms. Um, I was just starting out after all. We had these basic rhythms and they were used in worship because these drumming rhythms connected us to the universe. You will note that first peoples around the world do a lot of drumming and dancing. They see it as a part of, yes, celebration, but also as the root of their spirituality. It is this rhythm of the drumming and the dancing that connects them to the Creator. 
these rhythms draw us back to our roots. So in the psalm lesson today, read by Robin Sheila, we heard about the trumpets and the harps and the cymbals. This music was really important for the worship by the people. Music takes us into that spiritual connection with God. There are many of you who will say that the most significant part of worship together is listening to the organ, hearing the anthem from the choir, singing together those important hymns that we share, that in that rhythm we are connected to God. It's so much a part of our spirituality. It draws us together. Not so much this kind of talking that takes us into our heads, but the rhythm of the music. Even sometimes those shared prayers, such as the Lord's Prayer, but also others that we use during the service, have a certain cadence that helps us to draw together and to feel the Spirit among us. These rhythms are very much a part of our worship. All of life is a rhythm. I have sometimes done workshops where we've talked about the rhythms of life. And so what we do is take a sheet of paper and fold it in half. And we draw on the upper half this line. And we mark on it all the years of our life. 10, 20, 30, 40. Some of you will have a lot of years marked on that line. And then on the line, take some time to mark off and indicate significant happenings throughout your life. Some of your life experiences, such as when you were born, maybe circumstances about that, going to a particular nursery school, or burning yourself when you were a child, or the first day of school, or meeting a best friend along the way that was there for the rest of your life. Maybe times when you felt challenged in school. Maybe got into lots of fights. Maybe there was a time you even failed. And mark out when you had your first date. Maybe some of your experiences in hockey. Heading off to college. Maybe the first job. Or getting married. Then maybe a divorce, loss of a parent or a child, ultimately maybe retirement and different experiences during that time that you've had. So that you can mark off on the line all these experiences that you have had through your life. And then plot whether they were kind of positive or kind of challenging. And you can mark that for the really good times above the line, plot it as you would see fit. And then for the challenges, maybe below the line, when you were really challenged, maybe felt a bit depressed and maybe struggled with some issues in life. And then after doing all of that, you can start to connect the dots. And we think that, of course, being born must have been a good, positive thing for you. And you can plot all that up and down in your life that you might call the rhythm of your life. What has it been like? And then, in a similar way, on the bottom of the page, 
You can draw another line with all the years of your life. And then, in a similar way, go through what were the spiritual experiences and religious experiences that you have had in that life that were significant for you. Maybe your baptism, a special teacher in Sunday school, confirmation and youth group where you met so many good friends, Maybe a time when you left church for a while because it didn't seem to fit with you. For your marriage, a particular place that was important. I know people will come back here to celebrate in the renewal of their vows because this is where they made them the first time. And maybe a time when children were put into Sunday school and it drew you back to church again? Or maybe sometime when you were being challenged with certain things in life such as addictions and you decided, I need to be back in relationship with God again. Maybe a time when you were sick, maybe cancer, finding that you had to look to God again for some help and support. And as time goes on, lots of different relationships and important programs that we've had in church that are significant for you. And then, in a similar way, mark whether they were kind of positive or challenging in terms of your relationship with God. How was your relationship with the church? And then you can go back and make a line through all of those dots that you have made, the experiences within your spiritual life. And so you have the rhythms of your life marked out on a sheet of paper. And how are the two connected? What did the happenings of your life have to do with your relationship with God and your spiritual life? And so we live in the faith. In the ebb and flow of life, these are what connect us to the Creator. They are the rhythms of your life.
us join together in the high moment of our worship. Let us join together in prayer. And you may take this time in your homes to simply fold your hands, bow your head, close your eyes, and be focused on God. Oh, holy God, we come to you today with our prayers, especially with our concerns. We think especially today of families that are in stress. In this time when we are confined to our homes, there is a lot of stress created. It goes on for a long time. And especially for children, it is hard. They can only structure their days for so long and become frustrated. When you think about families that are experiencing increases in family conflict in this time. We just ask that you bless them and be with them. There are so many stresses that we feel during this COVID-19 crisis. Just be with families, help them when they have needs, help them to feel that they are valued and that they have a place. We think too, especially of people on the street, they are at great risk. There are less services that seem available in this time because of shutdown. And so we just ask that you be with them and care for them. We help as best we can with our sandwiches and all of that, but just be with those who are on the street. And, oh God, we ask for your blessings to be on our church, that our faith may be renewed in this time, that we will relate with each other, knowing that we are all children of God, that we are all important and significant. And dear God, we thank you for the stories of the Bible. They do bring us together. They do help us to understand the faith. They do teach us about new ways. They guide us in the spirit. And so we thank you for those stories that we have in the Bible. And oh, gracious God, we thank you for Jesus Christ, who has been with us and helps us along the way, is like a friend on the journey. Be with us as we think about our time in a journey with Jesus. And we remember how he taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We thank you for being with us today, and this is available by live stream, but also will be on our website through YouTube uh, in days ahead, and also will be on Cable 14 in Hamilton next week. We hope that God will be with you and bless you in this time. We know that we need God. May you be blessed. Amen.